should Chicago Bulls be looking to move on from Billy Donovan at the end of the season? A rumor would have us believe that. Me and Patrick are going to talk about all that plus more on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily Chicago Bulls podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, man, listen, when I leave Locked On, don't just start calling me Patrick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 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 (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central, Chicago Bears Central, YouTube pages, and podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply pat we're a little bit late on this um just because of circumstances uh but the, a couple of days ago it got rumored uh by greg schwartz who wrote um you know a blurb in an article that the bulls could be looking to move on from uh billy donovan for a younger coach that kind of prioritized player development and billy could want to move on and go to a team that's prioritizing winning now It was initially kind of, you read the aggregators kind of presented as like a report. It's more so Greg Schwartz kind of speculating on what the Bulls could do, but still it leaves something to be, to be talked about. Now people are going to initially ask, well, Hayes and Pat, why would the Bulls look to move on from Billy Donovan if they were, when they've done that this off season. And my initial thought to that question goes to, well, maybe they don't want a new coach to come in and have to deal with the end of the Zach, Zach Levine situation that could be one. And then also, maybe the Bulls are looking to see how much of these young players do make a step or a leap. And if they can get back to contending for that playoff spot, whatever spot the Bulls feel, the Bulls front office feels like is worth it, then they could actually pivot and start saying, no, we're going to keep Billy Donovan. What do you think when you hear all this, Pat? I mean, listen, the the the, the, the tough part about it, for me is as my dryer sings an entire song i hate this samsung dryer. we have, same, uh, we have the same dryer the samsung bro, I dryer think like, everybody has the same dryer bro like why was yeah. samsung just like bro hold on we not could just, just have it be a whole song bro but what if we drop this fire on their head after it's done like yeah. samsung said we're gonna drop bars on all of the other <laughs> <I'm watching laughs> um no the 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 billy donovan situation to me i i think here's the thing they're not saying anything that we don't know. Billy Donovan is not a bad coach. Me and you have both said that. We've yeah. said that we've had problems with the way that he operates certain things, but he's not a bad coach. Guess what? Monty Williams is not a bad coach. It just matters about the players that you have with that guy. And, yeah, sometimes you I know a lot of people look at it and say, well, you got to be able to motivate the players. you got to be able to coach with whatever team that you have. He's not that kind of coach because the coaches that can coach with whatever team you have are the great coaches right doesn't matter what team you give Spo. Spo's gonna find a way to win right I, I think m- maybe we're starting to find out steve kerr uh without stephen curry and those guys a little he's bit not one of those guys a little bit lower on the totem yeah. pole than we thought right people were like top five all time and i do think he's he's probably top top five all time but like when when you look at when the talent is gone what is steve kerr implementing right greg popovich son, when he had all of those guys he was able to go through everything with it. Now the bottoming out was a little bit of a different situation. But, I mean, he's been able to win with Tim Duncan in there, without Tim Duncan in there. He's been able to win with Manu in there, without Manu in there. So those are the coaches that can do it no matter what. Billy Donovan is not one of those guys. And it's not a slight to say Billy Donovan is a good coach, but he may not be the coach that this Bulls team needs if they're going to get into consistent winning. If you've got to, and guess what? When Billy Donovan, if he, the Bulls do end up moving on from him, uh, uh, does get fired, there's going to be teams out there that have young talent that are going to say, we would love to have Billy Donovan on this team. Yeah. They just are. And people and Bulls fans are going to be baffled by it, and he's probably going to do okay because that's what that level of coach does. I think he's on the same level as a guy like Monty Williams, who has been a coach of the year, uh, Dwayne Casey, who has been a coach of the year, right? Those guys, they can coach a really good team. They can make some really good things happen. But if you take those pieces away, they're kind of in limbo. Yeah, I mean, and and, and like you said, there's, there's – Billy Donovan is not a bad coach. He may be bad for this team, and we've said that for years at this point. Um, it may not be great for this team is the way, is the way I think, better way to word that. Um, 
But I think ultimately, like it just comes down to at some point, you got to you got to realize where you're going. And so the Bulls right now are hoping that they have some young guys to make a leap and this team can get back to being competitive, right, or whatever it is. But if this team does end up bottoming out, not completely bottom out, but being as bad as some people are expecting, like that may be where they start looking at and saying, hey, uh, yeah, we, we, we may need to move in a different direction, both for your benefit and for the benefit of the team. And I think ultimately, like when you look at, again, what, what the Bulls have done over the last couple of off seasons, you've added in a player development department headed by one of the best shooting coaches in the world and Peter Patton. Uh, you then this off season added two veteran in, in Dan Craig and Wes Unsell Jr., two veteran assistant coaches that have been the best when they're assistants and have been assistants of championship winning teams and have developed all stars. They've been heads of player development. So if you were to say, let's move on for Billy Donovan, you bring in a new he younger head coach or newer head coach they would come into a, a much better structure that's meant for player development. And I think the bulls are waiting and seeing is like they've gone younger, but they haven't really gone full head into just being in development mode. And I think if that's the pivot that the bulls feel like they have to make, they've kind of already made some moves that are going to help support that decision. Yeah. And, and I think here's, here's another thing too, right? I think how they've set this up is kind of perfect. You mentioned the assistant coaches that they brought in and some of the guys that could take over Billy Donovan is out. You know, when I would want Billy Donovan on this team, if Kobe white takes a step, the fact if, if Patrick Williams takes a step, if, if Josh, if Josh Giddy, Giddy, step, yeah, you know what I mean? If Josh Giddy unlocks something that makes Zach Levine want to stay here and the bulls want to keep him around and, and there's a come right. That's when I want Billy Donovan on his team because he's a coach that can coach a team that has the talent to go out there and win. We just all believe that, well, you had DeMar and Zach and Vooch. So how could you not make that team win? You had a bunch of dudes operating, op occupying the same spot. Yeah. And with some of the stuff it's literally just like, we can't sit there and act like it's not stuff that Billy Donovan hasn't said. Remember when they just wouldn't guard corner threes and everybody was like, why is it Billy telling them to defend the corner? And we were like, there's no way. There's, there's no, no way Billy Donovan is not saying, saying hey, don't yeah, be the corner. Hey, that, that corner, don't even worry about that. Just leave that open real quick for him. <laughs> so part of it is on coaching. Part of it is on team construction. Part of it is on development. Now, team construction, Billy Donovan can't do anything about the development. He does have a hand in that. And I think that we've gotten into a better spot with that. If if Kobe White starts to take off, Billy Donovan's absolutely one of the coaches that I want on my team. I don't mind him being here as a head coach because Kobe White, as a guard, is going to thrive in the system that Billy wants to run. Yeah, I mean, me, you've talked about several times as well. Like, Billy Donovan's system looks the best when you have a point guard playing at a high level. That just is what it is. That's the history. If you look at Billy Donovan throughout his career, except for Kyle. You know what? That's something that we got we to gotta talk about at some point because Billy Donovan had terrible point guards in college, basically. But the system always kind of looked good. Not ter terrible is too strong. I was gonna say I was like I don't think board. so. Terrible is too strong. He didn't have the most versatile point guards in college, I should say. Well, it was a different position back then too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, hey, pick and roll, feed this guy. No, I'm like, I was, he wasn't looking for scores back then. I'm trying to think. That's who, true. Was, who was is, is was DJ Augustine on that team? No, DJ Augustine went to Texas, not Florida. DJ Augustine went to Texas. Yeah. Uh, I can't even remember any of the point guards from that team. That's yeah, other than other than what Torian Green is the only one that I remember. That's just because he was on that Joe Kim Noah team. Um, but yeah. So, but anyway, not to not to sidetrack. We went down a rabbit hole on that. Yeah, one. We, yeah. I mean, listen, it, it is what it is. That's what they pay us for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the, in theory. I mean, yeah. With, with all that said, though, like ultimately, it's just like it depends on how this. A lot is, I think, is riding on what we see from this team this year. And if this team does look terrible, let's say they win like 26, 27 games, I do think that Mark Eversley and uh, AK look at this team and say, hey, we were hoping that these guys were going to take leaps and that we were still going to be competing for playoffs. Doesn't seem like we're going to quite be there. Maybe let's consider moving on to a different direction. Now, again, also, Billy Donovan, a lot of this, I think, talk is rooted in the fact that Billy didn't want to rebuild in right. OKC. But I think Billy may have learned as well, because let's be clear, had Billy just waited it out on OKC, it would have re been in the rebuild for like two years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we know Billy Donovan's decision-making isn't always the best. <laughs> I want you know what we never even talk about that. I wonder if he thinks back on that like God dang it. <laughs> could have had Shay, could have had, had Luke Shea. Dort, could have had Chet, could have had. I'm just saying, bro. Like, and that's where that and that's where like you have to you 
going through a rebuild is not easy. It's not. And like, you have to have patience. You have to have the mindset, but you also have to have the foresight and belief that the, who these players are going to turn into. Not to say that necessarily Billy Donovan looked at Shea and didn't believe that Shea was going to be something special, but maybe he didn't think that they were going to hit on as many, like, let's be clear. Like they still got multiple draft picks every draft for the next four years. Like, yeah. So yeah, they they can they can add dogs every year if they want. I mean that's tough. I didn't I I don't know why I've never thought about that. Like he left right before they got good. Now I will say this: Can you make an argument that they don't bottom out as well because of the kind of coach Billy is? I mean Billy that, is the Mike, kind of coach to mess up your rebuild. But, but Mike Danghold is a damn good coach though, bro. No, no, I get you. But what I'm saying is like I think that do you lose as many games with Billy Donovan at the helm? I mean, that's the thing, though. I like, think you hired Mike Dagno basically having a conversation of, like, you're going to lose. You I mean, we'd job, have to go back. Lose. But that's the thing, though. We'd have to go back and look. I don't, I don't remember what their schedule was over the last few years. I'd have to look that up. But, like, I don't think the Thunder always lost a lot of games. Keep in mind, most of their draft picks weren't their own. That's true, too. Like, uh, hold on, I'm trying to bring it up real quick. Their record oh, history, just so like that's a that's a that's an interesting conversation. Is that a reason why Billy Donovan may want to stick it out here though? Because he's like, I already did this. These mugs oh, so, might turn it around. So what what year did uh, he Billy's came here in 2020 here. 21 right or 1920 yeah, no. was the first year? Billy's first year here was 1920 right because okay. he was here in the COVID year. Okay, so 1920 the OKC Thunder won 44 games. In 2021, they won 22 games. In 2022, they won 24 games. And then so they won 40. 20 is his last year because they made the playoffs. Billy's last, last year. Okay. Because that was the Chris Paul year, right? Okay. I don't I don't remember. Yeah. So Billy Donovan was the coach in 1920. He came here in 2021. Okay. So they, they had two years of winning 20 and 24 games, literally two years of a rebuild. And then they've been off to the races. Yeah, and but I mean, I, I think even with that, right? That's having I, Shea in the building. That's why and I wonder, a, and a rookie head coach that's learning and adjusting. Right. Yeah. That's why I wonder: Do you lose as many games if you've got Billy Donovan there? They that's probably fair. were going to Billy saying, "You got to lose," and he's like, "I, I can't, bro. I can't. I don't, I don't know how." Like, <laughs> and then I he came to the Bulls and learned that. real quick. <laughs> That's funny. But all right, man, next up, we're going to be talking about the NBA Cup schedule for the Chicago Bulls. But before we get into that, I got to get into a message from one of our sponsors, and that is FanDuel. Oh, I don't know how the sponsor's going to like that one, Pat. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app, dream up bets at any time I'm in the mood. If you wake up and you're in the mood for betting, Hey, I mean, you might as well get it in with FanDuel. He a fan, he a and, fan, he a fan. Yeah, and this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Wow. <laughs> every time, that is hilarious. All right, Pat. While the schedule is officially going to be re released uh, in about two and a half hours from when we're recording this, which we'll talk about on uh, the next episode, uh, the, the NBA Cup schedule for the Chicago Bulls has already been released, uh, as it has been for all teams. And the Bulls schedule in this one, we know that we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. We have, we're have we in the same group as them, the Atlanta Hawks, some other teams like this. I actually think this group could be kind of a fun group to watch. There's a lot of potential storylines in this group when you look at it, uh, when it's all said and done. But let's go over it. So November 15th against Boston, November 22nd against Atlanta, November 26th against Washington, and November 29th against Boston again. How do you feel about that schedule there, Pat? Um, I'm sorry, November 15th is against Cleveland, not Boston. Listen, it's a tough schedule for the Bulls, for sure. Um. I, the NBA Cup really doesn't do much for me because it's like the Bulls aren't going to really be able to compete. I guess if you get a hot streak, right? Maybe you go on a hot run and you're able to do a little something in that cup. But like, but uh, to me, I I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not really in on the NBA Cup, bro. It's kind of it's kind of mid. 
It was kind of mid last year. It was like, I don't know. I feel like the play in the NBA Cup games was a lot more competitive than what I was expecting it to be. I mean, I know it we were more both competitive low. for sure. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I forgot, like, let's be real. I forgot it was a thing until they were like, we're going to announce these schedules for the Cup. And I was like, oh, yeah, we did do that last year. Yeah. Like, it didn't. Adam Silver doing the play in games has hit for him. And I, I'm not a fan of it, but arguably. Right. It is it is a hit. It's something that raises the level of competition. Mm -hmm. I don't think this raised the level of competition throughout the season. I think that it was a competitive moment and that the Lakers probably wanting to win the inaugural one, uh, the inaugural one was driving them a little bit. But I I don't know, man, the NBA Cup, it just it, it didn't wow me. I was like, OK, it's a th and maybe it's because the Bulls weren't in it and they weren't really a part of it. They were getting their heads kicked in by Boston by like, what was it? 150. Like that was, that was a crazy they, they, game. What They scored 145 points. Something like that because yeah. they needed to score that much to be competitive in the cups. So you were getting like these blowout games. That's but, something I do wish that they take away. Like the point differential thing, take that part of, of it away. But I guess you got to make something in there to be a deciding factor. Yeah, if just the wins are the same. I don't know. Is, did it stand out to you? Was it like better was I it, think it did. better I, I was, basketball? I think it was. Uh, and maybe that was also because I just didn't have high expectations for the cup at all. And coming into that, they played a lot more. Uh, they, they tried a lot more than what I thought uh, that teams would. I honestly thought teams would look at this and say, all right, cool. It's part of the regular season schedule. We're going to give a regular season effort. But even when you point out like the thing with uh, them trying to get the points, it, it did add a wrinkle. Now it sucked that we were on the wrong side of that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But um, overall, it's not that I'm, I'm not really excited about the, about the NBA cup, but I do look at it and say that it's probably going to be a day where we're watching this game. We're like, Hey, it's a cup game. Hey, actually out there playing pretty hard today. But I, see, I, I think, and maybe it's because of the Bulls. Like, I think the Bulls played at the same level that they always played at because they had no choice. Well, I mean, 27 of our 39 wins came in clutch moments. So, yeah, we, almost, um, we played every game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, game, it was, yeah. every game for the Bulls was the, was the uh, <laughs> NBA Cup. But yeah. I just, I feel like the for the other team, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't compel me to have to watch it again to excite me. Like, the schedule's cool. I'm glad that the schedule's been released. The Bulls are probably going to lose, what, three out of four of those games? I don't know. Maybe they'll be a little bit more competitive. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll see one of those games where Josh Giddy has 22 and 10 and Kobe White's like 25 and 8, and we're just like, yeah. hey, we're cooking. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can hit a hot run. Now, I will say this. For a team like the Bulls, I think for what we saw last year, it meant nothing, right? For the Lakers, it meant nothing. Yeah. Um, and I think Which that... seeing Lakers fans still boast about that still drives me crazy. I haven't it's like, seen that at all. Are they, are they beating their chest about the NBA Cup? Yes, bro. And then maybe I it's because I do player's play. choice now, too. Like, I just, it's like, I'd be seeing people bring that up, and I'd just be like, you're an idiot, aren't you? Like, I, just I, would, I would laugh in a Lakers fan face if he brought up the NBA Cup. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I would laugh in Adam Silver's face if he brought up the NBA Cup. So if Matthew Silver hits you up and be like, Pat, we want, you to so. we want you to be a live announcer for the NBA Cup, what do you say? Oh, listen, I'm not going to turn down no bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to turn the money down. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a B on that mug, but I am gonna say I'm. It's my job to make this more entertaining. <laughs> hey, the NBA Cup Championship game was like it was cheeks, bro. Yeah, bro. It was like they they real, now I'll give the NBA credit. I mean, yeah, the NBA credit. They try to make it feel like something, but it still looked like it was like it was like if uh if Stacey King showed up to call your high school game. It's like, I mean, I'm glad that Stacey's here. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, like it's a prestigious event, but also, yeah. why is this happening right now? Yeah, like, what, like, what, a little bit. like, thank I, you, but why? Hey, Stacey, I'm glad that you're here. What made you take time out of your day to do this? Exactly. Um, but I don't know. It, it's, I, I'll say this though if the Bulls can get on a run for a team like the Bulls, I should say, if you can get on a run during the NBA Cup, I would not be surprised if that would be something that sparked you playing better moving forward. I think it's more important to those teams, mm. right? If you have a hot four games and you find yourself in the finals at the NBA Cup, maybe you believe that you're a playoff level team all of a sudden and you're able to go out there and play with a little bit more swag or a little bit more confidence. Uh, that's yeah. the only takeaway from it where I'm like, I care about it in some sense of it. But like when they were like, we got Cup Tuesday, I was like, all right, now I got Thirsty Thursdays, which I really want to do. Like, <laughs> I don't need this. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd much rather go to Taco Tuesday than uh than NBA Cup Day. NBA Cup Tuesday, yeah, I, yeah. Or, or you do Taco Tuesday while the NBA Cup's on in the background. I mean, that that's that's the best of both worlds. It's probably about the best they could get out of me in that case. Yeah, yeah. it's not great. Let's keep this thing moving along, bro. We talked NBA <laughs> Cup. That's nuts. I mean, listen, you got to talk about it a little bit, man. You got to talk about it a little bit. But next up, we're going to be talking about Patrick Williams. Will the Bulls' commitment and faith in Patrick Williams end up paying off when it's all said and done? We're going to talk about that next. Zion Williamson and porn star. I don't know why we went with the Zion clip there, but hey, it, it was done. It is what it is. But Patrick, oh, we uh, talking with about that? Stuff. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> uh, the Bulls gave Patrick Williams a, a, a five-year, $90 million deal. Now, while that money um, is getting closer and closer, like mid-level exception, we're seeing more role players be given that money, the Bulls have stayed pretty committed to Patrick Williams. He's come into every season that he, that that started. He's been the starter at the start of every one of those seasons so far, right? Eventually loses the, loses the position in every year but his rookie year. That is what it is. But this season seems a little bit different. Will the commitment pay off? And the reason why I ask that, Pat, is this. I firmly believe that if Patrick Williams does lose the starting power forward position this season, he may very well never get it back. When you look at Julian Ooh. Phillips being behind him, being a dog, Miles Busillas, well, I think he's more of a three right now, probably yeah. a long-term four when he puts on some weight. He may never get it again if Miles Busillas hits that leap and things like that and, and, and adds weight to his body. This could be because prior to seasons of this, he lost his starting power forward position to six four guards. So there's always going to be that avenue of, hey, if you can just get this right, this is your spot back. But right. now when you look at a 6'10 Julian Phillips, an almost 6'10 Modus Busillas, if he loses this position to either one of these guys and they show that they're hungry enough, I don't know if Patrick Williams gets it back. How are you feeling, Pat? I mean, listen, I, I think that they're they're looking for any opportunity to give Patrick Williams because they want him to be the answer. They want mm -hmm. him to, you know what I mean, to, to be the guy who's able to go out there and, and, and take over that number four overall role. I know that we're done with the number four overall assumptions, but the Bulls are not. They're, they're still trying to see more out of P. Will this season. I think that... You know, with, with that being said, I think they'll give him every opportunity. I don't think that if he lost his starting role, he would never be able to get it back. But I do think that the Bulls are kind of like, listen, we gave you a role player's contract for a reason. We gave you a, while it's not no small money, but we gave yeah. you a comparatively small money deal for a reason because you have not proven yourself to us. You still have time to prove yourself. We still want you to prove yourself. We still want you to be a part of this team. But at the end of the day, you have to go out there and actually take it. And you haven't wanted to do that yet. So to me, with Patrick Williams, I think that the the opportunities will always be there, very similar to like how we're still like, why is Valus Jones on the Bears? Because they want to be proven right. When you get a draft pick that high, you want to be proven right. You want to be able to develop something out of that guy that's at least a role in the NBA and a consistent role in the NBA. Um, and I think that that's really... Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the Bulls – at first, if that's the Bulls' focus this year, if if their focus is to try and get the most out of Patrick Williams that they can while still developing Kobe White. Yeah, I agree with you fully there. I, I, I mean, the thing with Patrick Williams – I'm not as down on Patrick Williams as you are. Like, I think that – when we've talked about it, Patrick Williams is a, is a damn good role player already. He's one of those players already shown with his ability to play defense solidly, his ability to shoot the three ball. He's somebody who's going to stick around the league for a long time. The question is, is that – how much? Now, they gave him a role player's contract, basically. He's a little bit above that, but they gave him that. And I think that, that either way, it makes a contract that is not necessarily going to be a bad contract because, as you said, we've kind of moved off the expectations of four overall. Um, but still, the Bulls still have a lot of faith that Patrick Williams can turn into something. And I think he needs to show that this season. It comes down to me, when it comes down to him, it's aggression level, in my opinion. Yeah. And well, that's that's the thing, right? It, when when Patrick Williams is going after it, you you see the the uh, strength that he has. You see how dominant that he can be. You see what he can what he really can do, right? Uh, but to me, it, the the consi there needs to be an upgrade in consistency on this team. 
Yeah. And Patrick Williams is at the forefront of that. We talk about Kobe White scoring wise, but just Patrick Williams, hey, mentally, you need to be consistent. And that that's how you get. I would have thought that would have been the thing that DeMar DeRozan was able to bring the most out of this team. You know, like, and we kind of see that with Kobe White, but like, I'm going to bring you the same mentality every single night. Yeah. And I, I mean, think that's the part that we haven't seen from Patrick Williams that is the most disappointing part about him. We know we've seen him. I know he can play. I know he has the skill set, and I, I've said that. I made the comparison. He reminds me of Otto Porter Jr. when he was healthy. The problem with Otto Porter Jr. was never that Otto Porter Jr. didn't have all the skills in the world. It was, why won't you go out there and be this guy on a night-in and night-out basis? Now, when he finally started trying to be that guy, he instantly ended up getting hurt. And I think that's the thing, too. You also have to, you can mentally put yourself in a position, but you also have to prepare your body for that strain. Larry Markin, when he, when he was here, I said, when he's aggressive, he's one of the best power forwards in the NBA. And he leg legitimately, by the numbers, he was. And every time he would be con aggressive for more than four games, he would hurt himself. And so he had to get to a point where his body was able to keep up with the aggressive mindset that he was trying to develop. I think P. Will has to do that as well, especially with how much he's dealt with injury. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Williams has... It's frustrating sometimes because sometimes you see those games from P. Will where like like the the game that he has at the end of every season like the Minnesota Timberwolves game a couple of years ago or the game that he had randomly in December and you see it and you're just like just do that yeah you're not always going to end up with 20 and 8 but just do that like why why is it that we why is it that we only get that every once in a while from Patrick Williams like and I know some people blame Billy Donovan for it or whatever. They say, oh, it's because he's playing the three, not the four. I mean, he's playing the four, not the three or all that. But to me, it still just comes down to Patrick Williams' own aggression level, man. And I, I, like I said, I'm not ready to write the kid off yet. At 22 years old, it's, he's not at the point that yet where I'd be ready to completely write him off. And I think, like I said before, he's shown enough to where he can be a player that can contribute in, in specific areas. But you just want more from that, from P-Will. But I don't know if we ever get it, bro. I don't know, man. We'll see, man. We'll see what it ends up being. We'll see what this Bulls team ends up doing uh, with with him and and how they end up utilizing him uh, more this year. Hopefully, it's more, a more in a more aggressive role. But uh, hey, man, appreciate y'all for tuning in, showing love as always. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five star view. Y'all know what to do. Follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. Follow us both on everything at Locked On Bulls. On oh, God. <laughs> you can follow me at CEO Hayes. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Bulls. We are free and available on every podcasting app and platform of your choice, as well as YouTube. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked on Bulls. We out here, y'all. Peace. Peace.